Hi, good morning. Um, all right, it's another Saturday morning, and I'm out here a little bit earlier. I, I do believe it's before 8 even. I know. I know. The goal today, main goal today, is to clean that up, okay? The zinnia's got to come out. Tixie's got to come out. I need access to my compost because I have so many weeds that I'm weeding. And that's where they're going to go once they die so they don't regrow in there, you know. So I'm a little bit scared because I don't know what's living in there. Could be big spiders, could be snakes. Could be something undiscovered. No long intro, okay? I'm just put my gloves on. I'm gonna cut it all down. Uh, I'm gonna put the zinnias in a vase. They're, they're coming out. After that, then I will, oh my God, there's a hummingbird and my red salvia. Also, I just checked the time, it's 7.34. I know it's early <laughs> and it's not hot yet i know okay oh also also we could have a tropical situation with a barrel so we'll see how that goes i'm looking forward to like three or four inches of rain not gonna lie we need it we're dry i think the garden will really pop also i think i will bring out my seedlings <laughs> if i know for sure it's gonna hit you know that way i don't have to like harden them off i'm still watching that hummingbird that way I don't have to harden off as much if we're cloudy and rainy and only in the upper 80s for a week. Seedlings will be fine. They'll be fine. Okay, I'm getting to work now. Okay, here's what we're dealing with today. Beautiful. Oh, sorry. Oh, zinnias, spiders on zinnias. That's pretty. Um, and then a uh, tick seed, really tall tick seed, really tall, thick bushy tixie and I don't know what lives in there so let me get my gloves and my clippers <laughs> and we're just gonna start hacking at it <laughs> it's so humid. It's humid. I didn't bring a towel. Yeah. I'm so exfoliated. I'm so exfoliated. That's how I stay young. You sweat and then you rub, rub, rub. Okay? My beauty secrets, okay? <laughs> All that mound. We're gonna let that sit there till it breaks down, okay? And then I'll move it up inside the beds as mulch. So that is done. I have a bunch of quail poo. I know, we butchered uh, our first quail uh, last weekend. It's last weekend? Last week sometime, while Kyle was here. Uh, my husband and Kyle butchered 14 birds. I know. And then I uh, cleaned them, okay? I'm not, I can do, I can do that. Okay, I can do that. I have a, I actually have a bachelor's degree in biological health sciences with a minor in wildlife conservation. I can dissect an animal. I don't know why I'm in property management. That's, that's therapy for later. I don't know. Anyway, um, so that was good. Um, you guys had some great suggestions though on, um, you know, cause the video, I watched kind of two different ways to do it. Like you cut the backbone out and then splay it open and scoop out all the guts. You know, and then, you know, I dip the carcass in hot water first to peel off the feathers. But some of y'all said y'all just kind of, you know, instead of trying to save the skin, actually just kind of going up the skin, exposing the breast, popping the breasts off. You know, it's a thing. Um, so we'll see next time we uh, dispatch some birds. Um, and I did bury the, all the guts and the feathers and stuff. I buried them in the garden over there by the Roselle. 
Not a single animal has dug it up and it's been a week. I know, I think that's just dumb luck. Or I, I buried it like two feet down. <laughs> Maybe they couldn't smell it. Anyway, I forgot what I was talking about. <laughs> I have a lot of poo underneath the cages, okay? And so underneath the cages, it's just a uh, hardware cloth. So there's no, the bottom of the cage where they're walking on is hardware cloth. So when they poo, it just falls right through to the bottom. Great design that he found online for these quail hutches. And so what we do is we have some fencing around the legs, around the bottom. So the poo's piling up there and we just add leaves, all of our brown leaves from this past fall and winter. We're just adding leaves and then more poo, and leaves and poo and leaves and poo, amazing. So I need to start shoveling that out and putting it over here because that quail poo is actually hotter, from what I'm understanding, hotter than chicken poo. And so it needs a good year, 18 months before you can use it. So I need to start piling that S-H-I-T up in there. No. All right, let's move on down and uh, take care of this tansy real quick. But I'm meaning to do this tansy, you know, for a minute. All that splayed out, beautiful tansy. Don't want it anymore, don't want it. So we're gonna cut it down. Task number two done. Real excited about it. Okay, let me get some water and take a little break. Let this plane fly by and I'll come back to you. All right y'all, so I think next I'm gonna focus on the pots. Um, main reason is um, I've got seedlings coming out soon, eggplants and dwarf tomatoes, and I'm gonna do those in containers um, this late summer, fall. Um, also my citrus, this one here particularly, is just covered in grass. Uh, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take all the grass out and I'm gonna add one of these uh, kind of mulch ring felt things. Um, I did that to my blood orange over there, and what I noticed, I, I put it there to keep weeds away, okay? But a secondary positive effect is whenever I would water my citrus with the hose, I was um, unearthing the roots, like I was spraying all the soil off the roots and exposing the roots. Well, this is going to stop that, so I can recommend these felt circular things from Timu or wherever, just get you some. Put it around your citrus tree so when you water them, you're not exposing, you're not washing away all the soil from the roots. So, fun fact, anyway. So I'm gonna spend a few minutes and de-weed most of my pots. All right, y'all, so I went inside to charge my phone like four hours ago. <laughs> so, um, nice surprise is we have cloud cover and we probably dropped 20 degrees maybe. It feels really nice out here. Um, so we have uh, some storms back there towards Houston, just south of us, just enough south of us that we're probably not gonna get any of it and I'm a little mad about it because my garden needs the water. My plants, my trees, my landscaping around the house. I haven't turned on the irrigation to those beds yet and plants are suffering. So I'm like, well, we're, we're supposed to get rain. It's gonna rain anyway. And you know, we're, apparently we're gonna get a little, little tropical piece of barrel also on Monday, which today's Saturday. So we'll see what happens there. Um, anyway, I, am probably not gonna film <laughs> while I'm out here working because it's just so nice and so peaceful and so quiet um, that I kind of just wanna zone out with some podcasts or gardening videos in my ear pod thing and just kind of work and um, weed mainly, finish the weeding, um, getting my pots ready. 
so I don't think I'm gonna take you with me. I know. If these ear pods would pair with my work phone, that'd be different, but I can't get them to. I don't know why. Well, I don't know what the problem is. Anyway. Oh, thunder. <gasps> well, maybe we'll get a piece of something. Maybe I won't be out here as long as I think. Anyway, so I'm gonna work on pulling some weeds. Um, I think I'll come back out tomorrow morning and we will tackle the tomato towers. All those tomatoes are coming out because, except Wooly Kate. Wooly Kate's the only one I'm keeping because I really want to get a woolly tomato. And plus the foliage is still pretty. Everything else is pretty much dead or dying or sad. And I think I'm going to take out a lot of the uh, zinnias and the marigolds too. And just make room for new things, you know. Yeah, it's, it's time. It's time. It's time. Changing of the guard, right? That, may, that phrase may not fit here. But I used it. Thank you guys for watching this. Probably what's going to be a really short video. <laughs> Just because I can't. This summer is going to be a weird one, okay? It's going to be a weird one, guys. Um, oh, before anything happens to these peppers. Let me show you these real quick and then I'll sign off. This basket of Bikino yellow and red. So cute. Look, I have red ones. Look how cute are those. Yes, so the reds are turning red and the yellows are turning so bright yellow. Yay! So I'm gonna try pickling these and I don't know if they're that hot. Last year I grew some and the fruit were very small. This is actually way bigger than last year. And I don't remember them being haunted. They were, they were kind of smoky, maybe had a little bit of spice. But anyway, let's taste one. Okay, we're just gonna do a live taste test right now. I've got some wine over there. Because it's cooled off, okay? Don't give me any lip. Mmm, it's kind of lemony. Mmm. Mmm. It's got a funky. It's got a funky taste. What does that taste like? It tastes like something man made, like plastic. But fruity. Very seedy. Mm. Good seeds in that. It's not spicy. Mm -mm. It's it is smoky. It's like burning plastic smoke. Mm. But not in a bad way. Mhm. Mm it's fruity and smoky. Oh, there's a little bit of tingle on my tongue, but not bad. I think I like them better pickled. Anyway, I eat it. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to work without you. And we'll come back in tomorrow, hopefully early, before it gets too warm. And we'll see what we can get done before this hurricane gets here. Uh, we're not supposed to have any rain tomorrow, but Monday. Anyway, I'm talking. So, I didn't need a red one. I figure I should. Hi, I'm back. Now, the red ones aren't red red yet. They're kind of an orange red. I need that one. Mm -hmm. Plastic. Burning plastic. Okay. But still fruity. Very juicy. It's got a good, um, that's my AirPod. Okay. I'm gonna need to put a leash on on them. Stay my ears. Oh, that's got a little, a little more tingle on my tongue. Hmm. Hmm. A little more tongue tingle. But it's not hot. It's, they're pleasant. Probably not fun to watch me spit, but it's pleasant. Okay, anyway, pleasant plastic. It's a thing. All right, guys. Um, <laughs> bye. <laughs>